what we saw uh, and what was presented at ASCO 2020 was that there was no real difference. The TDM1 and pertuzumab was really not better, um, the, the group that had no kind of classic chemo. And um, during uh, the, the chemotherapy phase, um, the side effects and the quality of life were better on the TDM1 and the pertuzumab arm. But um, once you got af done with the chemo and you were completing your whole year of treatment, um, then actually the TDM1 and pertuzumab group had more dropouts, more patients who didn't complete all of their therapy. They were allowed to transition over to trastuzumab alone or trastuzumab pertuzumab. And I think what that says is very interesting is that, and of course we should have expected it, but when you're getting full-blown chemo, TDM1 and pertuzumab is better. But when you're just on the trastuzumab pertuzumab portion of the year long of therapy, the TDM1 has more side effects. And so it didn't really play out to be a more favorable regimen in terms of either efficacy or in side effects overall. A certainly a reasonable regimen, but it wasn't, uh, it didn't meet its primary uh, endpoints.